this is Russ Curtis, a counselor and licensed clinical mental health counselor. Uh, thank you to all the parents and the teachers and the counselors, social workers, psychologists, all the behavioral health providers out there who are helping kids and clients. Audible breath. <sighs> okay, you just heard me take one. Um, have you remember ever hearing like kids should be seen and not heard? And I'm wondering if that's what kind of got in the way of some of us holding our breath, particularly when we're stressed. I notice in class when I lead a mindfulness activity how quiet it is. It's almost as if people are afraid to breathe. And I suspect what this is is when we heard the breath, like, <sighs> that that was like, uh, you know, a sign that somebody disagreed with us or something. And while that can be the case, I think we've gone overboard and we've been teaching folks to hold their breath. And even when you're consciously trying to breathe, when you've learned that, you tend to hold your breath when you're stressed, which then limits the blood flow. It can cause you to feel very anxious, lightheaded, panicky. So learning to breathe and take a breath. Think about this. If you were in a yoga class or if you were getting a massage and the teacher or massage therapist, you heard them go, take that audible breath. You heard them do it themselves. Or maybe it's a person in the line at the supermarket actually takes an audible breath. It cues you in to taking your own breath. So what I want us to encourage our folks to do, our students and our clients, is that it's okay to take that audible breath and that we should practice that throughout the day so that we're not practicing holding our breath. Okay, if this was helpful, let me know. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and let me know what other content you'd like to see. Take care.